So disasters are everywhere, natural and otherwise. Some have happened already, some may happen, but hopefully won't. Some are very likely to happen, such as an earthquake in Adelaide, and some will happen, like the impending earthquake in Istanbul. Now, natural disasters come in all shapes and forms. Some are meteorological, some hydrological, uh, geophysical, biological and chemical. And over the last decade, I've been collecting loss data as well as um, uh, socioeconomic metrics to try and explain some of the trends in natural disasters globally. Now, if we focus just on disaster deaths from a few main disaster types, uh, flood has the highest piece of the pie um, from 1900 through to 2015 with over 51% of deaths. Um, 1960 to 2015, however, shows earthquakes to be the highest amount. Relative to global population, disaster deaths are actually decreasing, but compared to the global death rate, it's about constant. When we switch to disaster costs, flood still has the highest piece of the pie from 1900 through to 2015. But from 1960 onwards, storm, earthquake and flood um, ha have about the same amount. Total economic costs are increasing, but again, relative to the global capital stock, it's decreasing. Now, if we were to take all, um, all disasters from 1950 through to 2015 and play them out for 2015 circumstances, what we see is an improvement in flood protection measures across the globe, especially in China and Japan. However, for earthquake and storm, it really hasn't changed a lot. So if we take just one event, say the Typhoon Haiyan in 2013, we have a combination of hazard, that would be the wind speed, exposure, that is the population and the economic cost in the buildings there, as well as the vulnerability, that's the damageability of the building stock or the population. And this gives us loss. But we also need socioeconomic metrics. Um, one such metric is a human development index, which is a combination of life expectancy, education and income. Highly developed is shown in blue, least developed in brown. And we can see even across the USA, there are huge differences across states in development. And this changes the loss. Now, there are lots of complex uh, outputs of risk modeling. But really, at the end of the day, there's one key th component that we look at. We look at the probability say 99% of some loss metric, uh, say wine spillage, in a certain time period, say in the next five seconds, in a location, uh, maybe off the coast of Chile. And sure enough, it happened. <laughs> wine is a very vulnerable industry, and it's grown in over 140 countries globally. Um, very interestingly, it correlates very closely to Human Development Index. Um, the highest production in the world is in Italy and France, um, however, um, it is an extremely vulnerable industry to natural disasters. Earthquake especially, drought and climate, storms and tornado, bushfire, um, and biological and chemical. Now frost is something that has affected a lot of wineries across the globe um, in the last few years. However, they are doing a lot to mitigate the risks of frost using wind fans and other techniques. If we look, just look at earthquakes, um, it has problems for steel tanks, for wineries themselves, for breakage um, of bottles. And many savings could have been made in the last few years just due to a few dollars of better practice. We can expect that about $10 million in annual average loss in Australia. Of course, most of this comes from big events. However, it's a huge problem. Hail is an, also an extremely big problem for wineries across France and Germany with an increase of over 10 hail days in 1985 to over 45 hail days in 2015. And there's been huge losses in the Burgundy region due to problems with grapes. Now, distal volcano is another such disaster type which can be correlated to wine loss. The next, so after a big uh, volcanic eruption of over about VEI 6.5, what happens is that we see a huge downturn in wine output. And this has been, um, looked at from about 1300 onwards. Climate change is also one uh, key problem, although it, it might also be helpful. So for Germany, we will have a lot more wine growing regions in the future. However, other wine regions shown in red will have to either change their grape type to, from cool to a warmer type of grape, or they will become worse for wine growing. Now, wine brings people together. Um, it's uh, in Europe, Australia and the world, um, it's a $300 billion industry. And 
this, it was also earmarked in the Germany-Australia partnership as one of the few industries that was, was uh, taken on by the, government, the two governments of Germany and Australia. So when we look at industry risk, we try and crunch the numbers. We hopefully will move from risk ignorance to, a, uh, to risk mitigation and insurance. But what we need to find are cost-effective safety solutions that can combine in with the four-year decisions of politicians. So when we look at long-term risk, what we need to do is try to bring this into account. So what we've done is we've developed a website where we can hopefully help wineries. And I'll leave you, that's probably the first thing that we've had is the secret of enjoying a good wine, which is to open the bottle to allow it to breathe. And if it doesn't look like it's breathing, give it mouth to mouth. <laughs> so in the last 60 seconds, um, because that's about the amount of time that it could take for um, an earthquake to destroy a lot of our infrastructure in one of our major cities. Um, in the next two years, one of these scenarios of thousands of deaths um, could happen at about the same odds as Prince of Benzance winning the Melbourne Cup last year. So what we should probably hopefully do is to improve our code of existing building stock when renovating as well as for new buildings. We need to integrate it in with the political decisions rather than try and say that disasters are going to really uh, cause a huge amount of damage. We need to integrate it in with development uh, decisions. Also to work out hopefully that in the next 20 to 30 years there is a likelihood of one of these major events happening and that my hope is really that we can actually renovate uh, buildings to a better design code as well as hopefully we will have that all wineries escape serious damage in the future. Because for me, really, the glass is half full and that um, I think that we will move hopefully towards risk sensitive design where in 30 years time we can be safe in our homes as well as then have a nice glass of wine at the end of the day. So thank you. <laughs>